Are you planning to start with a new digital model railroad? Or do you have a DCC layout where you're still controlling trains pressing buttons on your throttle? Or are you even simply planning to spend a couple of hundred dollars buying new throttles for your DCC layout? If the answer is yes to any of these questions, then you are not realizing the full benefit of your DCC model train layout. Hello and welcome to Trains and Dioramas. I'm your host, Gustav Chatterjee, and if this is your first time here, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can take part in my adventures of making model train layouts, dioramas, and various other miniature projects. Computer control for model train layouts is a vast and complex subject. And many people think that you only need a computer to control your trains when you have a big setup or you have complexities like block detection signaling and you want to achieve complete automation in your layout. That is not necessarily true. Computer control is going to be an integral part of all my future model railroad projects. So I'll be talking about various topics on the subject in coming days, months, or even years. Now, I'll start with this three-part series to cover the basics. Today I'm going to talk about how you can connect your computer to your model train layout. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can control your turnouts, routes, and locomotives with a very basic setup using your computer and how much better and easier it is when you actually can do it using a computer as opposed to your throttle. And finally, in episode 3, I'm going to show you how you can use your smartphones and have some real fun controlling your layout through your computer. Now before we start, I want to make something very clear. I'll be using JMRI or Java Model Railroad Interface as my primary software and will be using Digitrax LocoNet as primary network. I'll also be using this test layout that I have made a couple of months back to show you how all this can be done with a very basic setup. Now I've covered some important basics of DCC wiring in that video and you can find that video right here in the card appearing on top left hand corner. Now, if you have been following my recent videos and you know that I have built this test layout to do all sort of prototyping for my future project, which is going to be a layout based on uh, the Adirondacks division of New York Central. Now, this is the layout that I will be connecting to my computer first and see whether I can use my computer to control the trains and then do more advanced things like block detection, signaling, etc. Now at this point, I will really be going for a portable solution. So I'm not going to use a desktop or a large laptop. I'm simply be using this old Lenovo notebook that I have lying around. No one uses it really. So I thought this will be a good opportunity to see if I can put this to some good use. And um, some benefits of this is, you know, this is a dual mode. This has a touch screen and everything. And it uh, so, so that definitely is helpful. Now this computer or, or notebook runs on Windows 8. Uh, so that is something we have to keep in mind uh, uh, during the installation of uh, the hardware. Uh, you're familiar uh, with my Digitrax DCS50, uh, so that is going to be my command station for now. Now to connect uh, this to this, what we're going to use is RR Circuits Local Buffer USB. So out of the packet, so it has a few things that uh, comes with the packet. So one is definitely the RR circuits local buffer USB module. Then you have one cable. So this is the cable to connect uh, uh, this uh, module with the computer. And this is the cable to connect uh, the local buffer USB uh, to the command station. And in our case, it's going to be Digitrax TCS50. So uh, it also comes with uh, a CD uh, as well as a quick guide. Uh, so yeah, most likely you will not be needing that. Uh, the, the the CD also includes JMRI, I think version four in my case. So you know uh, maybe with the later uh, releases, they they're uh, sending the later versions or more recent version of JMRI in the package. So this is basically what we are starting with so let's go ahead and s connect uh, these components uh, before we start with the driver installation so first things first the the easy part of it uh, you know connect uh, you know this jack the matching one to local buffer usb 
so it should be a snug fit this side is for the local net cable and uh, we will uh, look at that a little later uh, then the other side uh, goes to uh, uh, the USB so what I'm going to do is uh, for our purposes here I'm going to use the high-speed USB port here so you know there's really doesn't matter I do have the high-speed USB port so I'll just go ahead and plug this one in uh, right here so uh, as you just heard so computer understood that some sort of a new hardware is installed now uh, we are gonna drive onto the screen of the computer and see uh, you know uh, how we should be setting up a local buffer USB in the computer the first step is to locate your drivers. Now you might have this already in the CD uh, that comes with the product, but uh, you know, in case uh, you are looking for a direct download, you can definitely find that in rrcircuits.com website. Um, the driver that I am looking for is Windows 8, since this no you know, notebook is uh, in that um, uh, operating system. If you have Windows 10, if you have Mac, then depending on you know, the computer you have, you have to go and select uh, the, that specific driver page. Uh, in, in Windows 8, uh, the driver is available in this link. So uh, I'm not going to go through uh, the each uh, you know, uh, stage step by step, so of course, but I'll, I'll be following them and showing you exactly uh, what needs to be done. So as you can see, I've already downloaded this driver here. Uh, and the driver is available on my desktop. So the next step is uh, to, to go to the control panel. So in the control panel, you go to devices and printers. Uh, and since we already have local buffer USB connected, you can see that local buffer USB is mentioned here, right? So uh, under unspecified. So this is our starting point after you download your drivers. All right, so double click. On local buffer USB select hardware double click on the local buffer USB entry so you just follow this you can you could also do the same thing from properties as well so you know uh, just in case in the bottom of general's chat tab change setting button so as I said the instructions are very straightforward third window you find a button title uh, now where are the buttons uh, update driver so you click on update driver browse my computer for driver click on browse go to desktop just select driver click OK and hit next so yep that is it so let the driver get installed and we'll uh, come back to uh, the next step shortly. All right, so as you can see after a few minutes, oh, sorry about that. So uh, Windows has successfully updated your driver software and you can see local buffer USB here. So hit close uh, and close this one as well. Now, if you go back, if you go back, local buffer USB still shows under unspecified so you go ahead and select double click on that again select hardware now then now under hardware you have a new um, entry here that's USB serial port so we basically do the same thing in for for this one as well so click on this yeah change settings update driver Again, it just goes here automatically. So always, always make sure that you this include subfolder boxes checked. Otherwise, it will not be able to find uh, the right driver for you. Click next, and there you go. So we'll come back again after the USB serial port uh, driver is installed. Oh, well, here we go. Um, you know, the window successfully updated the driver for the uh, serial port as well. So keep closing these, go back, and now you actually see the, it's still under unspecified. I wonder what will happen if I refresh. Yeah, it is still under unspecified, but um, if you notice, 
it does not have that uh, icon uh, beside it. So you can click on this again and uh, see that all of them both are uh, properly installed and they're recognized as well. Now back to the local buffer USB, as you can see, uh, we have uh, two lights uh, switched on, so two green lights, so one is brighter and another one is not. So uh, in, in the manual, it says that the green lights are on two different sides, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, the next step is connecting um, the connecting local buffer USB to my Digitrax command station. So that should be pretty straightforward as well. Okay, so we plug this then and this should be pretty straightforward for even if you have Digitrax um, you know, Zephyr Extra DCS 51 or even the new DCS 52 so just connect it to one of the blocks so you you know have all three lights on in local buffer USB right so that means that you have a proper connection established now the next step is uh, to start with JMRI because so far all we have is we have established uh, the hardware connection so everything is now connected I still do not have power to the track so I don't want to put any power to the track yet so the next thing is start with the JMRI and uh, you know uh, build the connection between the system so let's go back to the computer and see how that is done to download JMRI, uh, first you need to go to jmri.org. Uh, you can go directly to the download uh, option here. Uh, if you are interested to scroll down, uh, you also have a little bit of a details about what JMRI is all about. The latest production release here and the previous releases, uh, test release versions as well. Uh, for our uh, purposes here, and of course, uh, not to forget, all the different things that you can do, uh, you know, a different uh, mobile phone apps, uh, AnyRail uh, and JMRI, how can they be used together? So we possibly will be touching on these topics a little bit in uh, this video or maybe in future video. But for now, let us just go ahead and start with the download option. So you click on download and you find the you know uh, latest production release now here in the download you again need to make sure that you're selecting the right option for your uh, operating system so for me it is going to be windows now i already have this downloaded so that's why i'm uh, not going to do this again so let me just show you uh, what happened here so so i have JMRI 4.14 as you can see in my download folder here download loaded already so let's go ahead and start with the installation process so you double click this software to be installed hit next pretty straightforward install for anyone using this computer or if you have a shared computer then just click on install just for me uh, I am going for the core file startup menu and desktop shortcuts everything together hit next um, this is the in a destination folder so as again, again uh, straightforward no need to change anything unless you know exactly what you're doing uh, hit next uh, and then you go ahead and hit install now as JMRI is installing so one important item is that you do need the latest Java uh, to be installed in your computer so you can always give a simple Google search. I just use latest Java download. You will find this download free Java software. Uh, click on that and just make sure you're in uh, java.com download section. You might actually also see an Oracle uh, link, uh, but uh, my recommendation is that you stick to the java.com uh, download. So you just hit on this Java download and it is going to be exactly like any other software download you uh, will get a uh, get an exe file and then you just run the exe file and uh, you know uh, download java now you need to complete this before 
you download and install JMRI because otherwise the JMRI installation will error out and again they will ask you to download the latest Java version as well. Back in our installation wizard, uh, then the JMRI uh, installation is now complete. So as you can see, it shows completed. Uh, hit next and then just hit finish. And that completes the JMRI download and installation. It's as simple as that. Now, if you come to desktop, given I you selected those options, you can see two desktop shortcuts. Let me just isolate them from my <laughs> jungle of icons uh, decoder pro and panel pro now we can start with either of uh, these two options but since um, my objective is to be able to operate the layout and run some trains as quickly as possible we will be starting with panel pro so double click on panel pro now use configuration profile my jmri railroad so let that be as is uh, hit OK or if you wait uh, for more than 10 seconds it will immediately take that and continue. Alright so here you have uh, the panel pro uh, open uh, you know the, the first launch window uh, so to speak. So the first step is going to be to link your hardware with JMRI. So um, you go to edit in panel pro, click on preferences. Now if you use um, uh, if you use decoder pro, it will already you know it will ask you to do that. Now here you can see that before I actually had a, a JMRI uh, installation in in this computer before, so it has taken some of the values uh, to begin with. but let me just explain them to you. Uh, you know clearly anyway so uh, it you know by default it actually start with non selected when you're installing in a computer for the very first time so I am going to go ahead and select Digitrax in the system connection uh, there are a lot of options now as you have already seen we're using local buffer USB so I'm going to use local net local buffer now there is also the option of local buffer too so you need to know which one you're using because based on that your uh, configuration is going to change as well so you hit local net local buffer now serial port uh, if you remember we installed com3 the usb serial port when we uh, installed the driver for local buffer so select com3 command station i'm using my old dcs50 zephyr command station so that should do um, connection name is local net and uh, the prefix is L, so I'm not going to go ahead and change anything. Uh, these these are editable fields. If you feel like you want to uh, designate some other name, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. Now, you need to select this additional connection setting. Now, this is actually important for one uh, particular reason. Now, if you go to the quick start uh, manual or, uh, you know, uh, the the manual for local buffer so the first point in the quick start manual is that this is 57.6k board speed now this is actually a very important data point because you need to enter that exact value in jmri so select 57.6 by default it will be 1920 so you select 57.6 if your manual says that the speed is 57.6 baud. Uh, hardware flow control, uh, you know, I don't recommend changing anything uh, for uh, in, in, in any of the other sections of additional settings. Transponding, let's not look into that now. If you have transponding uh, a feature in your, on your layout, you might want to select this. Uh, layout is uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep as normal as well so these are the basic connections now once you're done click Save once you hit save uh, you know a panel pro will ask you to restart go ahead and select restart the effects or, or sorry the changes are not effective till you restart uh, JMRI so again the same screen again 
my JMRI Railroad, that's fine. Fantastic. We're back to Panel Pro again, and now we have established a proper connection uh, with uh, the local net. So now the next step is to see how we can use JMRI to control something on the layout. Let's start with our turnouts. So I've got my test layout down on my workbench. Uh, this will be uh, beneficial because I will be able to see what's going on right there and it will be much easier for me to show you uh, what is happening as and when I'm doing something on in, in my computer. So uh, a quick recap of the of the connection and now I think it's uh, pretty easy to understand as well. So the layout is connected to uh, my command station. Uh, these are the two wires. Red is rail A and black is rail B as it is denoted um, uh, on, on, on the labels uh, for individual wires. And then uh, my command station is connected to my computer small little notepad here through RR circuits local buffer USB. So this is the local net side of the connection. This is the computer side of the connection. And as you can see, all three lights are on. So the connection is good and solid. Another quick recap, uh, and, and that's why I have all these labels on, on, on this layout. So we have three turnouts here, and we will start with the turnout programming so that we can quickly start controlling the layout and run trains. Now the turnouts are, uh, you know, they, they already have uh, their own address. So this one is 101, this one is 102, and that one is 103. So just a quick little note, and I'll show you exactly why that is important. Another important factor is that 101 and 102, they actually form a crossover. However, if you notice that in that crossover, 101 actually goes in the closed uh, position, it connects to the crossover, whereas for 102, it is actually the thrown position that connects to the crossover. A small little detail, uh, I'll show you uh, the importance of that uh, while doing the programming. So the first step is to go and uh, record our switches in uh, the table. So you go to Panel Pro and Tools, then Tables, and then Turnouts. So in JMRI, the basic concept is that first you create a log of all your equipments, and that's where everything starts, right? So you start from there, and then you keep building on that. So we will go by uh, the, the the turnouts as we already discussed uh, based on their address. So let's set up this one first, 101. 101. You can give a username if you want, uh, you know, uh, to, to explain something along with this, like, you know, turnout one, uh, 101 or T101. Uh, for our purposes today, uh, you know, I'll just keep this just 101. So now the the entry is there. Now before you start, one important thing is since the turnouts are running on DCC bus and not directly through local net, so go ahead and turn on the track power so that uh, you know a uh, computer can communicate with the turnouts. Right now it is unknown, so click on, click on unknown. So it reads back the turnout position is closed. As you can see, the turnout is closed right now. Click on this button again. The turnout is now thrown. So it shows the thrown status over here. Click again. The turnout is closed, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and log our other turnouts. 102, so that is the other one in the crossover. Right now it is unknown. Once you click unknown, it will read back the current status. So it shows it's closed. Click again. Yeah, so as you can see, now the turnout is thrown. Let's go ahead and close that back. Next, add 103 create unknown 
all right so as you can see it will by default it closed and then recorded that status so now if i throw it again so as you can see you now the turnout is moving it is as simple as that i mean it cannot get more <laughs> simpler uh to to go ahead and connect your uh computer to uh to, to your layout and start controlling things now essentially there are excuse me there are people who would be happy just with this this level of control and we will uh quickly see how you can make it a little more user friendly with um you know additional mobile app and things like that but just like that, we have created the ability to go ahead and control uh, the turnouts on the layout. And as you can see, I mean, you can create a list of, you know, as many turnouts as you want and control them from here. So the next step is going to be uh, to go a little more advanced uh, and uh, to, to sort of uh, visualize or realize these turnouts individual turnouts as a part of the layout. So now that concludes part one of this three part series. And as you have seen, we have established solid connection between the layout as well as my computer here. So now in the next episode, I'm gonna show you how you can control your layout, a very basic setup like this one using your computer and as well as run your trains using the computer throttle in JMRI. Till then, Happy Railroading.